Welcome back. So a green liquor is making an appearance in a St. Patty's Day cookie that's both sweet and minty fresh. McKenna Moore from Kinship Cookie Company is here with her creme de menthe recipe. So you've actually already started and mixed yes. in eggs and a couple other ingredients in here. Yeah, so in the bowl of stand mixer I have brown sugar, granulated sugar, half cup of butter and one egg. I'm going to get that going again. I'm adding in here one teaspoon of Mexican vanilla extract. We want to notice this is also a very low speed. Is that on one or two? Yep, it's on one mm -hmm. right now. We'll speed it up in a second. Have some sea salt. And sea salt versus regular salt. You know, what about the sea salt really brings the flavors together? Um, it, the sea salt, if you use a nicer salt, it's going to give a little bit more of a refined flavor and it's not going to be overpoweringly salty. It's just going to bring out the flavors a little bit more. Um, I'm actually going to bring this to a stop. We're going to add the star of our show, the creme de menthe. This is two ounces of creme de menthe liqueur. Now, we know it's St. Patrick's Day. Creme yes. de menthe, green. Is there any other reason that you chose this liquor for this recipe besides it's yeah. making our cookies green? So if you want to make an alcohol-free version, you can definitely use green food coloring mm -hmm. and some alcohol-free mint extract. That looks delicious right yes. now. Like, we're already seeing all this green come together, and there's something so special mm -hmm. about getting those green cookies oh, or yeah. shamrocks, something on the holiday. Yes, absolutely. Wow. So we're going to make sure that this is fully incorporated. Green all throughout. We're looking good, looking good. Yeah, I think it looks smooth. We're seeing that green, and... We're ready yes. to move on. Are these dry ingredients you've added yeah, together? Yeah, here I have all-purpose flour, some cornstarch, and baking soda. It's going to be our leavening agent. I'd also like to say that the mint scent is really coming up yes. off this batter right now. That's what oh I like to use that creme de menthe. It'll give us a nice shade yeah. of green that we're looking for and mint that's strong but not, not toothpastey. And you've also just kind of put this on a low setting mm -hmm. still as yeah, this mixes so together. Yeah, flour not flying everywhere. Keep it as clean as possible. Okay, I love where this is heading, but I also love something I'm seeing. So the Andes mints, my mom loves these. People who love thin mints or just love all the St. Patrick's Day mm -hmm. flavors. This has to be great. Oh yeah, so this is actually creme de menthe and chocolate in the Andes Ooh. mint. So I've chopped these up so they'll layer into our dough nicely. Wow. And just as this is starting to come together, we can turn that off, scrape this out. And add in our Andes mints. And this smells delicious. I mean, Absolutely. it's going to be great when these cookies come together. Yeah. So now with our very clean hands, <laughs> we will mix this right into the dough. Yeah. I saw her wash her hands a couple times. Yes. We've got the pure all <laughs> over here. Everything is definitely to standard. This looks great. Yes. So I'm going to make sure this is evenly distributed throughout. And what kind of texture should we be looking for if we're making this at home? Um, well, it's definitely going to be a dense dough. That's what mm -hmm. the cornstarch does for us. So it manipulates the protein in the flour, and it's going to make for a denser, chewier cookie. OK, so we're talking about chewy cookies. We've got protein mm -hmm. and cornstarch in it. And your cookies, there's something special about them, because <laughs> if we look at the finished product, I mean, those are heavy, right? Oh, yeah. how, how heavy are they exactly? Each cookie is a quarter pound. Quarter pound. So I'm like, you don't even need the energy drink. You don't need anything because no, you're going to have enough over. energy probably just from eating that. That's all you need for like five hours. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we have our scoop here. We'll pack this in nice and tight. Lots of dough in there and bring it out here. So actually, these are going to get baked at 410 degrees. 410? Um, mm -hmm, for 410, how long? 10, eight minutes. Eight so minutes. So high temperature, low amount of time. And when they come out of the oven, they're actually going to look pretty similar to how they look right now. They're not going to really flatten at all. Wow. So I like to take the back of a spatula and just press those down until they resemble something like we have in front of us here. And real quickly, could I ask you about that baking mat? Because that's a yeah. little different. Yeah, so as I said, we're baking at 410 degrees, which is a pretty high temperature. Um, if we don't use a barrier between the cookie mm -hmm. and the, the cookie sheet, then the bottom of the cookie is going to get brown and a little bit burnt there, a little bit too tough. So if you want to use um, parchment paper, that works too. But anything between the cookie mm -hmm. and the pan is going to protect it from getting that tough shell on the bottom. 
Well, thank you so much, McKenna, for teaching us just a little bit. And of course, bringing these green cookies, making St. Patrick's Day just a little <laughs> bit sweeter. Bill?